Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. If you've been following Age of Empires 4 news at all, you know we were all expecting details revealed today at Gamescom. At a minimum, it seems safe to assume we'd learn more about the Holy Roman Empire and the Rus. They were announced as the final civilizations a couple of months ago, on top of the six we already know quite a bit about. As expected, we did end up getting a better look at those final civilizations today in a relatively short minute and a half long trailer. It had a lot of rapid fire clips back to back, by my count 24 scenes less than 3 seconds long on average, making it difficult to pick out everything on a first viewing. For this video, we'll go through it a bit slower, and also check out some very extensive write-ups just posted about the civilizations on the official website. Starting things off, we get a peek at the Rise of Moscow campaign, which of course will be a campaign for the Rus, featuring the Mongols as the antagonists. The first shot is probably just defending some small village against a Mongol raid during the campaign, and you can see archers grouped up on top of a stone wall, which is new for the franchise. In the next shot, we have a small bridge skirmish against what again appears to be the Mongols, presumably even from the same mission. You have an obvious hero unit dressed in golden armor, so he's easy to find, though it's hard to say exactly which hero this would be. This was hundreds of years ago, so I hope it isn't a spoiler, but Moscow was actually captured and burned a few times, and yet always seemed to storm right back, and we've heard in interviews the AOE4 team is taking a longer view on campaigns, possibly spanning multiple generations. Given that, I can see why they would pick the rise of Moscow for a campaign, as it has a lot of highs and lows, with some pretty intense setbacks. We then get a deeper look at the roofs and a glimpse at some of their architecture. Based on the official civilization write-up from ageofempires.com, it sounds like each age is meant to capture a specific time period in the development from early Rus to the Duchy of Moscow. Their economy overall sounds quite strong, with a steady income of gold from their unique mill called the Hunting Cabin. We're told they still act as mills, but generate gold based on the number of trees nearby, and can also produce scouts. They also have a unique bounty score mechanic that's increased by killing animals on the map. If I'm understanding it correctly, as you kill more animals on the map, it sounds like your passive gold generation increases at hunting cabins. It's an interesting way to encourage a player to explore the map quickly, albeit maybe a little bloodthirsty to have a game plan of hunting every animal on the map to extinction as quickly as possible. As long as military units can't attack guide units like deer, then that could be a pretty interesting mechanic, and encourage you to hunt deer as opposed to farming until you can build up your bounty score. It also sounds like they're quite defensively oriented in the early game, with stronger palisade walls and outposts, followed by having early access to knights in Age 2. If you're being raided early on by either archers or light cavalry as shown in one of the clips, then early knights could help stabilize that situation. Moving on to their unique units, the first is the Streltsy. Unlike the similar sounding Strelet in Age of Empires 3, which had very low attack, it sounds like this version is a high attack gunpowder unit that does more damage when stationary. I interpret that to mean that their attack increases as they're standing in one place, meaning you're better off not microwing or kiting with them too much. They also carry large axes that you can use against melee attackers, and we get a shot of that in the trailer. In the next shot, we see what may at first appear to be another type of heavy infantry with curved swords, but as we'll see in a moment, those may not be trainable Rus units at all. Their second unique unit is the Mounted Warrior Monk. It says they improve the combat abilities of nearby units after it attacks, so it obviously has a dual function of fighting and as a support unit. Considering their monks, they can also pick up relics, which we know can be used to convert units in mass. We even get a shot of a conversion in action, causing some charging Mongol swordsmen and cavalry archers to flip sides. Something I hadn't noticed before is even the little spikes at the end of the conversion circle seem to be able to capture units they touch. After seeing this clip, I'm pretty sure the swordsmen in the previous shot with curved swords are just converted Mongol units. From the official website, we also know that the Rus have a cavalry archer as another sort of unique unit, although it's safe to say it's probably not as strong as the Mangadai, which was alluded to in the Mongols' write-up. Maybe surprisingly, there's in fact yet another set of unique units for the Rus called the Lodya Trade Ship and the Lodya Attack Ship, which it says can be converted into any other type of ship. It's not clear how many choices you have there and how that could be used to a tactical advantage. We also get a glimpse at some of their landmarks, and one that you can build going up to H2 is the Golden Gate, which acts as a market but gives better exchange rates between resources. You can see how even with fewer civilizations, you can make use of landmarks to essentially customize your civilization to be either more economic or militarily focused. Another example of an H3 landmark is the Abbey of the Trinity, which naturally helps produce their battle monks at a discount and gives them unique upgrades. Similarly, one of their H4 landmark options that's revealed is the High Armory, giving a discount on Siege and extra upgrades for them as well, like instant setup and teardown of mangonels and trebuchets. 
Overall, it sounds like Bruce are going to have a lot of different options between early cavalry, strong gunpowder, siege, warrior monks, and even cavalry archers. In the late game, at least, they seem initially like a bit of a jack of all trades civilization. That's just one of the new civs though, and the other is the Holy Roman Empire. They're described as a powerful infantry-based civilization built for defensive turtling, with extra armor on their buildings. Their outposts, towers, and keeps can also apparently garrison relics for even more armor and damage. I like the direction they've gone with relics and giving them a civilization-specific use here. It seems possible that both Rus and Holy Roman Empire could add extra priority to relics and gives an interesting dynamic when those two civilizations are matched up. In Dark Age, we're told the Holy Roman Empire have a unique religious unit called the Prelate, I'm assuming it's pronounced, that can be created at the town center. As you'd expect from a monk unit, it can heal and also give a boost to nearby military units, but it also seems to be able to help your economy. In one shot, we see it boosting the productivity of a lumberjack, or should I say lumberjill, who instantly drops off extra wood with the prelate nearby. We also see him walking through a farm as well, so I assume he just automatically walks around and helps your villagers produce extra resources. In an earlier trailer, we saw a similar looking unit for the Chinese collecting gold from buildings, which the official write-up called a tax collector. Their other unique unit is the Landsknecht, I think it's pronounced, who are a light infantry unit with an area of attack. Since they fight with a two-handed sword and are classified as light infantry, I assume their HP or armor is quite low. But if you can get a few enemies in range, they seem to be pretty effective. In this close-up battle, they had a pretty decent edge in numbers, so it's hard to estimate how strong they are from this alone. But if the Holy Roman Empire is all about infantry, as they say, then presumably this will be a pretty solid unit. In terms of their landmarks that we know of, going up to age 2, one option is to build the Aachen Cathedral, which it says creates a large inspired area when a prelate is garrisoned. I'm not quite sure what that means and assume it has something to do with the extra resources that we saw villagers dropping off. They also have a unique tech in age 2 that increases the speed of infantry units, again coming back to them being an infantry civilization. Heading up to age 3, they can then build the Burgave Palace, which creates 5 infantry units in the time to create one, so basically the batch creation system. Remember, this is just one building doing this, so while it helps them ramp up production, it's not like they're producing 5 times as many units as any other civilization, they just need fewer barracks. This is also the age that the Prelate can research a tech to inspire units in battle, so prior to this it seems to be only an economic unit. And finally, for the last age up, you can build the Ellsbach Palace, which acts as a keep or castle, while also reducing damage to nearby buildings, which I think is an interesting idea. Further adding to that defensive theme, they also get a tech that increases the HP of towers, walls, and gates. We can see from the trailer that they have access to heavy cavalry, a variety of siege units, archers, crossbows, and early gunpowder, though I expect the Landsknecht is going to be a fan favorite. Interestingly, in one shot, we see what looks to be a mace-wielding unit, though it isn't referenced in the write-up, so I assume this just means that generic units are going to have reskins for different civilizations. So that's all the new information released on the two new civs. I like that both the Rus and the Holy Roman Empire seem to have an early ramp to their economies, one with a building and the other with a unit. I also think these two civilizations matched up against each other would be pretty interesting in a 1v1, since not only would you have relics to think about, but also a clash of what sounds like a defensive turtling civ against one that expands all over the map to gather hunt. Now like I said, a short minute and a half trailer was probably a letdown for some fans, but on closer inspection it was actually a lot of info when you dig into it. With presumably most of the details about bonuses and units now revealed, all that's really left to hear about is the next closed beta, or alternately when an open beta might start. Keep in mind Gamescom isn't over yet, and in fact this is all just from the opening show. We're just short of two months out from the release of Age of Empires 4, and this is the biggest gaming hype event leading up to that, so I wouldn't be shocked by another announcement still to come. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.